Hello and welcome back to our lessons. In this video, we are going to learn more about carousels and generic elements. So let's first create a flow. So create a new flow and then let's name our flow carousel and generic. Click OK. All right, after that, we are going to create our first element. So for simplicity, we can just use text element as our first element. OK, let's say this is our start element and then we are going to configure our text let's say hi hi first name and then let's add some emojis to be fancy and after that let's say use the option buttons below okay and then click confirm changes and we are going to use quick reply here so we are going to add our first quick reply and choose the next step option. And on this one, we are going to say show carousel and then confirm the changes. And then we are going to connect this to a carousel element. So click the node and drop it on the screen. And then we are going to choose carousel element. Great, we have now created a carousel element. Now it's time to configure this. So let's change the label, my carousel. Great. And let's add a typing delay for, let's say, five seconds or three seconds. Please note that currently the typing delay only shows on mobile phones, on Android and iOS. For some reasons, it does not show on Messenger for browsers. So after that, we are going to um, click carousel item number one to configure our carousel. So what is a carousel element? So a carousel element is a group of cards containing a text and an image which can be stacked together horizontally. And if users want to view each image or each card, then they would need to swipe to the left or swipe to the right. So in this case, our carousel element only have one item. So let's configure our first item here. So just click on our first item and let's configure this. So we need to change the basic image here. So to change, just delete the image first here, and then we are going to upload the image that we are going to use. So click on upload an image, and then choose the image that you want to upload. These are the images that we are going to use for our carousel element. Note that you can use two shapes of images here. You can use a rectangular image, and you can use a square image. But if you use a rectangular image, it must be rectangular or all throughout, meaning that every carousel item that you add, you must use a square image for all of the carousel items. The same is true if you use a rectangular image. You must use a rectangular image all throughout. So in this case, we are going to use square images. So all of the um, carousel item that I am going to add, we are going to use a square image so that our carousel would look really good and it is uniform and clean. So let's just use the first image here as our first carousel item. All right, so we have uploaded our first um, image. So let's say that this is the social media growth. So this is our um, carousel item title. And let's say that upload images, videos, create campaign, go VK. So you can also add image redirect action here. So when people clicks on that image, they will be redirected to a website. So let's just say that I want to redirect them to um, this website, Marketing Master IO. So we can use that as well. Note that this is optional. You don't have to do this. So we can redirect them on a new tab or we can use web view. In this case, for example purposes, we are just going to use new tab. So whenever people click on this image, a new tab will open and they will be redirected to this website. So you also have the option to um, add the image URL instead. So if you don't want to upload your image and you already have uploaded your image somewhere, so you can just copy that image URL and then paste the image URL here. But note that once you have uploaded your image, do not delete this image. Okay, do not delete that image because this is the URL of the image that we have just uploaded. Okay, so after uploading, do not delete the image URL here. So let's confirm the changes. Great, we have um, configured our social media growth carousel item. So 
we need to add another um, carousel item here. So it's really easy to add a carousel item. Just click on add another carousel item button. So click this. And then as usual, we are going to configure this. So if you want to remove a carousel item, it's also rather easy. You'd be able to see a trash icon here. So whenever you hover your mouse to the carousel item that you want to remove, the um, trash icon would show up. And if you click on this trash icon, the carousel item would be removed. Just confirm that you really want to remove that carousel item. So to add, click the add button like this. And to remove, just hover over the carousel item that you want to remove and click the trash item or icon and then remove your carousel. Okay, so now we are going to configure our carousel number two. As usual, we are going to remove this image, the basic image, and upload our new image. So let's say, and then for the description, let's say unlimited, and then we can add a redirect URL here. So it's really optional, but in this case, I'm just going to add it anyway. So confirm the changes. Again, do not delete the image here because this image URL is the image URL of the image of the carousel that we have uploaded. So confirm the changes. Okay, so I'm going to add more um, carousel items here. So wait up. Alright, so as you can see, I have already created five carousel items here. So notice that we can also add buttons for each of the carousel item. So let's try to add a button here and then let's say learn more and then let's use the next step um, button type here. Confirm the changes and let's connect this to learn more. And after that, let's name this. This is the learn more response and then let's confirm the changes and let's rename this as okay um, we are going to add buttons here the same way we added the button for our first carousel item so for the second carousel item we are also going to add a button let's just um, copy the learn more text here and click add button add the uh, button text and use the next step and confirm the changes and on this case, we don't have to create um, a new text element. We can just reuse this learn more element here. So just connect this to the input. Notice that um, this text element now accepts two inputs. So it means that whenever the user clicks the learn more button, they will be uh, redirected here. They will receive this message. And the same is true if the subscriber clicks on the learn more for our second carousel item, they will still be redirected on our learn more text because all the outputs here are directed towards the same element. Okay, now let's configure the third carousel item. Let's also add a button here, add learn more, use next step, confirm the changes, and connect the button to the um, response. Same is true for the third um, carousel item. Add learn more, use next step, confirm the changes, add it here. So what I'm doing here is this is just to show you that it's possible to connect um, multiple inputs on the same text element by connecting it on, uh, on the same input um, node. This is the input node. You also have the option to um, use a new quick reply element. All you have to do is click add button, add learn more, and then confirm the changes and you can create a new text element here if you want, okay? So let's say that separate response. So let's say this is a separate response. So what I'm showing you here is um, you have the option to either connect the button to a brand new um, um, text element or you can use a common text element such as this one. So just like um, the previous example that we have shown you about buttons, we are also limited to only use three buttons here. So you can add another button here, 
button number two, you can add, oh, let's say I'm going to redirect this to the next step. You can add button number three and redirect to the next step. But you won't be able to add a fourth button because as a reminder, on Facebook um, Messenger chatbot, you can only add a maximum of three buttons. So to remove a button, you would be able to see a trash icon whenever you hover your mouse to the button that you want to remove. In this case, button number three, let's remove that. Button number two, let's remove that as well. Okay, we have added button to our carousel items and we have added a separate button here just for an example purposes. And yeah, let's save this and let us send a test message. Test now. All right, we have received our test message. So we are going to click show carousel to show the carousel that we have um, just configured. Great, we now have received the carousel that we have configured earlier. So as you can see, this looks like a card with an image, a title, a subtitle, and a button. So if the user um, swipes to the left, they would see another card here. So that's how it works. In this case, I am using a desktop browser. That's why swiping is not um, possible, but they can click on this button, the next button, so that um, they would be able to see what the next item looks like on our carousel. So this is the last carousel. And if we click on any of the buttons here, example, let's click learn more button for our carousel item number one, it would show us the learn more response. And let's go to carousel item number two. If we click learn more, it would still show us this same element, okay? The same text element. And if we use the last carousel item, if we click the button here, it would show a different response because we have um, configured the last carousel item to use a separate text element. Okay, so that's how you configure and create a carousel item. And this is what a carousel item would look like. Carousels are good if you want to showcase products, if you want to showcase multiple um, services, or you want to explain more about the feature that you want to showcase or a product that you want to show the benefits, okay? So let's go back to our chatbot flow and I'm gonna show you how to create a generic element. Okay, so we have already shown you how to create a carousel. Now let's add another quick reply here and use next step. Let's say show generic and then confirm the changes. And in this case, we are going to click the button here and drop it on the screen and use generic. Notice here that the only difference between generic and carousel is with carousel, you can add multiple items, but on generic, you can only configure one. Okay, so the configuration is the same. So if we click here, it would really look like the same configuration as the carousel URL where you have an image remove the image and upload the image that you want to use. Example, this one, I want to use that image and then add your um, title and your sub or description here or the subtitle. And then since this is optional, I'm, I'm not going to add a value here. So let's confirm the changes. And to, for us to test it easier, we are going to add a triggers um, element here, connect it to our first element and then configure this and then add a keyword. So my keyword here is carousel and then click OK. So now whenever I type carousel, our flow would trigger. OK, so let's rename this one as generic. OK, my generic element. And after that, we are going to save the changes. So always save the changes before you are going to test again. So we are now back to our uh, messenger. Let's type carousel so that the flow that we are going to test shows up. Now, the flow that we're going to test is here. In this case, we are going to click the show button, quick reply, and it should show us the generic element. All right, so as you can see, we now receive the generic element. So this looks just like the carousel, but the only difference is it is only one element. It is not a multiple items like this one. You can also add buttons here. And you can also configure the image. If, you, if the user clicks on that image, they will be redirected to the website that we have configured.
as you can see, we are now redirected to the website that we have configured um, on our carousel item. So you can also do that on the generic element by simply adding the redirect URL here. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you learned a lot. So what we learned is um, we learned how to use the carousel element to configure each of the carousel element. We have learned how to add buttons and how to use a common replies here, common element for the um, text. And also we have learned how to use the generic element. So we have a lot to learn. So stay tuned for our next video.